Now in this video, we'll see some of the logging options on the Cisco routers. Now before we go ahead with the logging options, let's try to understand what is exactly logging. So logging is a method of keeping the track of all the events or the changes, whatever happening on the router. Like take an example on the router, we have configured a shutdown command. You will see some log message saying that uh, the interface changed state to down or maybe you have enabled some debug commands. Probably you want to see this. You can see the messages on the console screen or maybe some, some user logged in and he made some changes to the router and you want to keep the track of that particular information. Now what we can do is we can, uh, we can store this information on an external server and that concept we call as logging. Now here we have different options of logging like we'll be seeing initially with console logging and then we'll see some logging options with buffer, terminal logging and using an external server to log your information or the log the changes. Now first we'll start with the console logging. Now in the console logging whenever you make any changes like here you can see I just powered on the router here. Now there is a router 1 and on the router 1 let's say I'm connecting to some interface interface S0 by S1 by 0 I'm going to shut down the interface. Now I got the access via console screen and whenever you make any changes you will see this you will see some message displayed on the console screen which shows you the logging option. Now this is what you know uh, the log messages what you will see on the console screen or maybe you made some other changes like like you 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 can also run some debug commands let's say i'm running debug commands and then i'm going to configure ehrp on the router and once i advertise this interface it will start sending the hello messages now those hello messages you will see on on the console screen now probably uh, you can keep the track of all these changes on a specific server or you can store this on the local buffer memory now if you want to verify this logging information we can simply use show logging and when I say show logging whatever the changes just happened it will be stored in the local buffer memory and you can see these are all the messages uh, when I powered on the router and then when I made the interface change state to down like if you see here these are the debug messages which I just enabled now we can keep the track of all this information now by default the log messages will be stored in the local buffer memory and if you want we can change that particular buffer size uh, to some other size now that's what we call as buffer logging and the buffer logging uh, the router is going to use its own ram to store the log messages and these log messages will be uh, will be lost if you power off the router so it is not a complete uh, store store uh, it, it's not completely storing your log information but uh, it's it's just maintained as long as you power on as long as the router is on now let's say if it exceeds that particular limit in that case it is going to delete the older log messages to 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 have the new log messages now the default log size will be like to verify this we can use show logging option and when i say show logging option you can see here the log messages so all these are the log messages and the default size is around uh, 8192 bytes so if you want to change this size of this local logging buffer, we can use a command called buffer logging, logging buffer. Or we can say logging buffer and we can define the size. What should be the size? Now we can even define the buffer size. Let's say I want to make 16384 bytes. Now we can change it. And to verify again, we can use show logging. Let me clear the logging. So we can also clear the logging by using clear logging command. And if I give show logging, I can see the buffer size changes to 16384 bytes. Again, from here onwards, uh, if any log messages comes, it will be automatically sent to the local buffer and that we can verify with show logging commands. But now one of the major drawback with this uh, buffer logging is it is going to store your log messages in the local RAM and it will be, uh, it will be removed once it reaches the limit or if you power up the router. And it's it's not a kind of permanent permanent logging in permanent logging. So we, we need to have a solution for permanent logging. So in those kind of scenarios, we can send these log messages to an external server. Now before we go to this external server, let's discuss one more logging called terminal logging. 
Now terminal logging is more similar to console logging. Now if you are accessing the router via console port, probably any changes you do on the router, you can see on the console screen. That's what we are able to see here. Whenever I make any changes, I was able to see these messages. But if you are accessing the device via telnet, like I take an example in this scenario, I have two routers. Now the router one is connecting to router two and then the IP address is 1.1.1.1 and 1.1.1.2 and the IP address on the LAN interface is 10.1.1.1 and 20.1.1.1 okay now in, in this scenario I what I'm going to do is I'm going to telnet the router from the router router 1 from the router 2 now in order to telnet we need to have a password so let me let me access the device via telnet because most of the time we access the devices via telnet and then we are going to say the password password is NVA and then login and then I'm going to say enable secret password is also NVA done now what I'm going to do is from the router 1 I'm going to tell it to 1.1.1.1 that is router 1 now when I try to tell it it's going to ask me the password the password is NVA and then enable password is also NVA now right now I'm accessing the router 1 from the router 2 via telnet so now if I make any changes on this particular router 1 right now if I shut down the interface now you can see I'm not able to see any any console messages and if you verify the interface is down by using show IP interface brief you can see the interface is down and if I give no shutdown the interface will come up but you don't see the messages here now why because because uh, by default if you are accessing the device via telnet the Cisco iOS does not send the log messages to the terminal session if you are using the device via telnet or SSH now if you want uh, the the Cisco iOS to show the log messages on the screen we can use a command called uh, terminal monitor we need to enable this now we need to manually enable this by using terminal monitor now if I try the same thing by shutting down the interface or any debug commands we want to use you can see um, I should see the log messages here and these log messages again will be stored in the local uh, logging buffer a similar way if I give no shutdown it will come back again now there are two different ways you know like here either we will be accessing the devices via console and we and whatever the messages you see on the console screen we call it as a console logging uh, whereas it is stored in the local uh, buffer local RAM and we can change that size by using the logging buffer command and if you are accessing the device via telnet by default it is uh, by default uh, on the VTL lines the log messages will not be sent if you want to send uh, we need to use a command called terminal monitor now there's something very useful you know most of the time in the production networks or uh, most of the time you access the devices via remotely and you make some changes you expect it, sh it to show some log messages on the screen and based on that we can uh, we can understand that there is something happening on the router like maybe you are configuring EHRB you are expecting the neighborship to come up and you will see the message that the neighborship has established a new adjacency and we generally prefer that now probably in in most of the scenarios we prefer to use an external server which can store all the log information and that concept we call as syslog servers now probably here what we are going to do is we will try to log all the information whatever the changes happening on this router we want to store that information permanently on onto a computer and we can do that by using some external servers and we call it as syslog servers now the router can can be used to forward all the log messages to some external servers syslog servers for the storage and to enable this feature we just need to add a command saying that logging host and whatever the IP address of that particular host so ensure that you have a reachability to that particular host and we can send all the log messages to this uh, to this server to this computer and even I can configure the same thing on the router too as well as on all the switches so whenever any changes done by any administrator or any user and whatever the changes he did or whatever the console messages you should be able to see that now probably here we are going to verify the same now to verify this I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use some a program uh, TFTP 
D64. This is a program. It's a free source program which can be used to to see the log messages. Now I already installed this program in in the machine here, and I'm going to select the interface which I'm connecting to my to my router here. Now here in in my computer actually I have a connection. I got a router one. Router one is connected to F0 by 0 to the, my computer, and the IP address I'm using is 10.1.1.10. Now to, now to test and verify the same, I'll go to router 1, I'll try to ping to my 10.1.1.10 host, you can see I'm, I'm, I'm able to get the reply. Now the interface which I'm connecting here is, if you want to go and verify the interface, um, I have an IP address here, I can also go and verify the same on the interface here. So it's already connected. Now the next thing what I want to do is, I want to, and I'm running an application TFTP this one. And here I'm going to select the interface which uh, which is connecting to the PC here. Now I'm connecting the local Microsoft Loopback interface here. This is 10.1.1.10 interface. Now we need to select that interface and then here there is a syslog server option here. Now this screen is going to show me all the log messages or the changes, whatever is happening here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to router one and let, let me make this here. I'm going to router one on the router one I'm going to make I'm going to configure a command saying that logging host and I want all the log messages to be sent to an external server and the IP address of that external server is 10.1.1.10 and that server is running a small uh, syslog server application now here I'm using a free source tool it has limited options but that will be enough for testing out here now once we do this now let's let's make some changes here now I can see the console message saying that login to the host 10.1.1.10 is initiated on port number 514 and you can see the message here you can see the display of the message here the same message exact the same message what you will see here and let's try to shut down the interface any one of the interface just to verify now once you shut down the interface you will see the console message on the screen which is stored in the local buffer and also you can see this log information is stored here and let me make the interface back to up no shutdown command the interface will come back again and you can see the same message here displayed here now you can see this logging information is coming from so and so computer on so and so date and so and so uh, complete information here again you, you'll find all the same information over there now if you want to further verify you can try some other options like let's say I want to enable EHRP so to enable EHRP, let's say on the router one, I'm already running EHRP. I think I, I, I configured EHRP last time. I'll try to configure the same thing on the router two as well. Now network 20 dot network in the LAN on the router two, there is one dot network here. So on the router one, you should see the neighbor agency will be established. Sorry, uh, actually I configured it on the router 1, it has to be on the router 2. Router EHRP 100 network 20 dot network and then network 1 dot network. So I was using the telnet from the router 2 so that's a problem. So you can see the neighbor agency has been established and the same message you can see here. Now this is a simple example to, to understand how the syslogging can be done and probably if you're using some, some other softwares probably uh, it will show you some lot of information like it will also show the username information and you have some more options on that but this is a very very good way to test it out how you can you can do something logging on to an external service